Yeah, now it is. Okay, I'll begin again. Welcome to all of you this morning. Um, just so you know, we will be celebrating Holy Communion during worship, and all of you who trust in the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ are invited for either a blessing or for the elements of communion at that time. Some announcements. Following worship today, we will have our fellowship time. You're all invited to come over and greet each other and have some conversation. And then um, after a bit, probably about 10, 15 or so, um, I will be over here on this side of the fellowship hall. They, we call that the north side. And um, we'll be leading an inquiry class. So any of you who are interested in knowing more about St. John's or being a Lutheran or any of the things, questions you've had about the congregation, please come and join me there. Um, also, there is a new Bible study starting this week, Wednesday evening um, at 7 o'clock. It'll be one hour, 7 to 8. Um, it's on the book of Revelation, and uh, this will be an introductory time. And so I invite all of you to come to that. You don't need to sign up ahead of time. Just come on Wednesday night at 7. Uh, during this season following Easter, we've been having a Revelation reading every morning during church, or every Sunday morning during church. And um, oftentimes, Revelation is a little bit confusing for folks. It's been interpreted many different ways. And so let's meet on Wednesday night and talk about the book of Revelation and see if See if we can help each other come to some understandings of this um, incredibly marvelous, sometimes frightening book. So please join us. Um, you probably are aware that pictures are still being taken this week. I know there were still a few slots open for those of you who have not yet signed up for your pictures. I hope everybody does. Please, everybody, have your pictures taken this week. And um, so if you still need a time, call into the office on, on a Monday morning and you'll get signed up. Um, this week, um, two of our longtime members of St. John's have died and have entered into our Lord's eternal glory. Um, Kenneth Kreiser, his visitation will be here in our fellowship hall this afternoon from 3 to 5. And then Virginia Pillar, her funeral will be here on Friday morning at 11 o'clock. Today we will be offering our prayers to their families, and we also will be offering prayers this morning for um, Wyatt James Kempson, who maybe many of you have not met yet. Um, he was baptized last evening. Those are my announcements. Let's begin worship. Please stand. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy, Holy Spirit be with you all. children who would like to come forward this morning for a children's message there's some folks out there are they coming up oh, here comes here comes a couple from the balcony here they come good morning mrs. Anderson good morning you're welcome glad you're here thank you for helping out yes here they come Good morning. I was hoping you didn't see my hammer so it would scare you away from coming up here this morning. But you know why I have this hammer? I have a little story to tell you about this hammer. Many years ago, well, you can tell it's pretty old. Isn't it? Well, many years ago, my husband bought this at a store. And when he bought it, they gave him a guarantee do you know what a guarantee is? Well, a guarantee is like a promise. And the store where he bought this hammer, they promised that if it ever broke, or if it didn't work well, he could bring it back, and they'd either fix it, or they'd give him a brand new one. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Oh, but wait a minute. What if he lost the hammer? Hmm. Or what if somebody came in the garage and took it without asking? That's stealing, isn't it? Oh, do you think the store would give him a new one then? No. I think he'd be out of luck. He'd have to go buy a new hammer, wouldn't he? Wouldn't it be great if we had a guarantee that we would never lose something or that it would never break or that no one could ever take it away from us, wouldn't that be a wonderful promise? You know what? We do have that promise. In the Bible, Jesus promises us that if we trust in him, and if we believe in him, that someday we can live with him in heaven where everything will be good and wonderful. Isn't that a wonderful promise? That's a promise that nobody can take away from us. Nobody. It can't.
can't break, you can't lose it, because that's a promise from Jesus. That if we trust him and believe in him, that we can live with him in heaven someday. Isn't that a wonderful promise? You know, the Bible is full of all kinds of promises that Jesus gives us. And that's the very best one. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us so much that you would promise that someday we can live in heaven with you forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for coming up. You have a good day. It's time for Children's Church, so if anyone wants to follow Maria. Good morning, Maria. Follow her over there. First lesson is written in Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is written in Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. I will also be reading verses 11 through 17. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. 
the hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that, I, that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered about him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Each year, on this fourth Sunday of the Easter season, we consider what it means to call Jesus the Good Shepherd. I am the Good Shepherd, Jesus had announced to his followers. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus says it again I am the Good Shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. As Christians, when we look at the front of the bulletin today, the picture on the front cover, we see that Jesus is tenderly caring one sheep. I wonder if maybe that's the one that was lost and now is found. And then if we look closer, we can see that that shepherd is followed by this huge flock of sheep, so big we can't even begin to see the ending. And when we see all those sheep, we wonder. Remember that Jesus had said, you know, there are other sheep that do not belong to this fold. They're mine too. I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I lay down my life for the sheep, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Every year on this Good Shepherd Sunday, the appointed psalm is Psalm 23. Many of us know that almost by heart. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of my Lord forever. Once more, if we look at this picture on the bulletin, the Lord is my shepherd. Then in the Gospel of John, Jesus goes on to say one more thing of great importance.
Jesus. He says, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. Now, I know I've, I've said this before, but to a reminder that there are two Greek words that get translated as the word life in, in, into English. One word for life is the word that describes physical life, our skin and our flesh and our bones and our breathing, physical life. The other word for life is soe life, and that's the word that we have here. Soe is life beyond skin and bones. It is deeper and richer. It encompasses the mind, the spirit. Soe is life that is abundant, eternal, everlasting. We know the difference, don't we, between physical life and life, sowing life. I give my sheep eternal life, Jesus says, and they will never perish. That eternal image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd continues in what Susan read for us this morning from Revelation. In that passage, John of Patmos describes a vision he has been given by an angel of the Lord. In his vision, John sees a heavenly scene where a great multitude of people are gathered. The people are from every nation, from all tribes, from all peoples, from all languages, and they're all standing there before the heavenly throne and before the Lamb. Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, the multitudes cry out. The Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. There's that word again. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. good shepherd, seated on the eternal throne, is worthy of praise by all living creatures in creation. Now this past week, and maybe it was because I had these Bible readings in my mind, but something rather interesting kept happening. As I went about my daily work, I became aware of the living presence of the Good Shepherd in the lives of the people around me, the people who I was coming in contact to, with. I would go to them, and there was the Good Shepherd with them. It began earlier in the week as I was preparing for the baptism of little Wyatt James. I had pulled out the baptismal service so I could start practicing putting his name into the prayers. I knew that in the service I would be making the sign of the cross upon him. Wyatt James Kempson, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And it was at that moment that I knew the presence of the Good Shepherd. That Good Shepherd, whose cross was now marked upon the forehead of little Wyatt, knows him by name, and no one, no one will be able to snatch him out of the hand of that Good Shepherd ever. Again, I caught <clears throat> Again, I caught the image of the Good Shepherd in the lives around me as I was preparing for class this morning. You know, often when we think about the Good Shepherd um, being there for us, we think about us individually and the Good Shepherd caring for us, and that is totally true. But it's bigger than that. Jesus is also the Good Shepherd of the entire flock together. As sheep, we are called by the Good Shepherd and are given to each other to be near us in our life's journey. Our calling as a church 
is to be in relationship with our good shepherd and that means that we will also be in relationship with others around us too the other sheep called by name the whole flock together with Christ leading us is how we are able to do effective ministry in our world providing for the needs of others through the abundant life we have been given. Then a couple days later, the presence of the Good Shepherd came to me while I was visiting someone in their home. They have been quite ill. Psalm 23 said, we prayed. Our prayer was spoken in confidence that the Lord is our shepherd. He makes us lie down in green pastures, leads us beside still waters, restores our souls. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear not e fear no evil, for the good shepherd is with us right then, right there. The good shepherd was present, protecting Again, just a day ago, I received word that a longtime faithful follower of Christ had died. I pulled out my prayer book, turned to the funeral service, looking at the com commendation prayer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, I read, we commend your servant. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. And I saw her joined with that great multitude standing before the throne, singing praises to the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd, Jesus proclaims. The good shepherd who claims us as his own and who will never let anyone snatch us out of his hand. The good shepherd who gathers us together with other sheep, even those from other flocks, for protection, companionship, The Good Shepherd who walks with us always, never leads our side. In the good times of green pastures and still waters, in those hard, hard times, dark valleys. The Good Shepherd is one who is seated on the throne, guiding his beloved to the springs of the water of life, wiping away every tear. That's who the Good Shepherd is for us and for the world. Praise be to God. And so now we stand to sing, adding our prayer of praise to the voices of the multitudes. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
please join me in exclaiming the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Giving thanks for God's great gift of grace in the world, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Pray for your church on earth, that your spirit would guide us into faithfully carrying out the ministry of justice and mercy you intend. We pray for our congregation of St. John's. Keep us diligent in sharing your message of love and hope and salvation with those around us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the earth, the planet upon which we live. Sustain the health of the environment and open our eyes to see creation as good and worthy of care. Watch over the farmers and implement providers and seed companies and keep all workers safe during this planting season. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the nations and for their leaders that they would work together for the good of all people. Bless every country with the courage to follow what is wise and good. Pray for those in all nations who suffer from oppression, war, and natural disasters, including those in Japan who are suffering and grieving loved ones because of recent earthquakes. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all those hearts and minds who are troubled this day, those who are ill, and those who are recovering from accidents or medical treatments, including those we name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for the gift of new life, especially the newly baptized child of God, Wyatt James Kempson. Fill his life with the knowledge of your presence, this day and always. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In thanksgiving, we remember the faithful departed, including Kenneth Kreiser and Virginia Piller. We pray for their families that they would live in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection through Christ our Savior. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share Christ's peace with each other.
us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Our Father, is now ready. You may be seated and the ushers will direct you.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give thanks to you, O God, that you make your home with us, bringing heaven
heaven and earth in this holy meal. Fill us with your spirit as we go from here, that we may wipe away tears, tend to those in mourning and pain, seek the healing of the nations, and bring to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us this day and forevermore. Lord.